Hey Internet, Just Them Retro Gamer here. Now, we've all used all sorts of controllers in our lives, everything from the, the humble joystick to the more advanced gamepads of the current gaming generation consoles. But there are some truly bizarre controllers out there. And just because they're different doesn't mean they're good. Like, for example, the NES 126 Quick Shot for the Nintendo Entertainment System. A truly remarkable piece of garbage. Join me as we take a closer look. The Quick Shot QS126 was released in 1988 by Spectra Video International for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Designed to fit in the palm of your hand, this controller features a 4-foot cable, auto fire, and even came in 4 different colors. Alrighty, let's take a closer look at the Quick Shot by Spectra Video International. It's a kind of an odd looking device for a controller. You got your fire buttons up top here. Uh, I assume B and A, or maybe it's vice versa. That's actually kind of odd uh, that they didn't label them. It's not on the edge. Huh. Anyway, you got your auto fire here in the center. I assume that's uh, rapid, so you hold it down and it'll, uh, well, rapid fire. At least one would assume, unless it's auto fire, where both of these just start working on their own, completely defeating the purpose. You got the start and select button, uh, button? Uh, buttons. <laughs> a rocker, actually. Here you have the start and select rocker. It's a single button that kind of rocks back and forth, so you can't hit start and select at the same time. So, you know, any of those games that require that, you're just, um... SOL, as they say. And last but not least, there's the directional disc. A lot like the ones on the ColecoVision. You get, it doesn't really, I guess it does kind of spin, but I don't think it's supposed to. You can rock it in any of the cardinal directions and in between. It's, yeah, it's, that's basically all there is to it. On the back, we got ourselves our voltages. Ah, uh, let's see, we got five volt plus or minus 10%, so give or take 5 volts, I guess. About 10 milliamp maximum. It's kind of odd they felt the need to mention that, considering this is going into an NES, which kind of regulates its own power. But hey, you know, who am I to judge? Quick shot, made in China, model number QS-126. As for the feel of the buttons themselves, they are... Oh. Um, they're awful. Oh, these feel so squishy. You can listen, listen to this. You can kind of hear the whole thing flexing as I push the button. That's a telltale sign of a quality product. Oh, it is squishy. Uh, yeah, definitely rubber membranes. It feels super cheap. I assume you hold it like this. One would assume, anyway. This way I have access to the very, very sticky... <laughs> very, very squishy and sticky buttons. And then I use this hand to control the D-pad, or D-circle, I guess is what this would be. Which um, is very counterintuitive, considering that an actual NES controller... Pretty much any control, any modern controller is reversed. This, however, looks like at least the only comfortable way I can find to hold this thing. You're using the uh, left hand for your A and B, and then your right hand for your uh, direction directional pad here. A lot like an Atari joystick. So um, that'll be interesting. Let's see how this thing actually runs on some games. All right, let's actually see if we can play anything with it. Alright. Alright, yeah, moving around. That's uh, awkward, but a little. Uh, it's weird, but okay. Alright, um. Okay, so that's a B button there. And that must be it. A. There we go. 
Oh boy. Uh, I, <laughs> I do not like this at all. I mean, my other hand is in the way. So it's kind of hard to um, hold the B button and run. same time because my other hand is like right behind here so I'm like I'm holding my own hand while I'm holding the controller and it's kind of awkward come on uh, oh and the A button sticks oh it sticks oh that's not good uh, I ran out of flap <laughs> come on I'm pushing it and it doesn't... Whatever. We made it to the end of the level. Oh, that is just awful. All right. We got Galaga loaded up. You know, since uh, last week's scheme was also Galaga, I mean, why not do a little more Galaga? Galaga, Galaga, Galaga. This is the song in which I fly into space and get blown up. All right. Let's see here. Okay, no turbo on. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, this is fine. This isn't really my preferred way to play it. But, uh, I mean, it works. Pop on that turbo. I mean, if you're just holding down the fire button anyway... Take me, I'm yours. Oh no! I mean, if you're just holding down the fire button anyway, I mean, you only have to push left and right, so it's not really... that difficult... Um, to use this controller with, uh, with Galaga. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense, considering it's just an arcade game. I per again, I personally prefer controlling and moving uh, with my left hand <laughs> instead of my right. Uh, it, this feels just kind of wrong. Which is weird, because, you know, it feels perfectly fine on an Atari. Well, that pretty much went as expected. Hopefully this does as well. I'm pretty sure we're not going to lose any sleep over this if, uh, for some reason we can't get this thing back to normal after this. Heck, who knows? Maybe we'll break it so bad it'll work great. That's called positive thinking. I am positive that this thing is a piece of junk. Okay, screws are undone. Well, let's see if it comes apart. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, maybe. There we go. And the buttons just kind of slide right in there. And, uh, some kind of, uh, tape that is currently <laughs> just falling right off of it. Great. Hopefully that actually has no... Oh, it's so sticky. I'm currently not sticky enough to actually hold the wires in place. Alright. Okay. Oh, this thing feels so sticky. That's just the residue from the tape. At least I hope it is. All right, we got that out of the way. Bada boom, bada bing, and there's our controller. Uh, traces and all. Oh, look at that. Isn't that just something? Oh, you got melted, uh, got melted wires here on it. Some, uh, awesome soldering job. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. Uh, it <laughs> it looks as it, it literally is as cheap as it felt. I mean, I don't know if anyone prior to me has taken this apart or not. All I know is that this is definitely not the best quality product I've ever seen. Well, it just doesn't look as nice as uh, an uh, actual NES controller. I mean, who would have thought, right? Well, there you have it. Good controller. Piece of crap. 
I'm sorry to say that the Quick Shot's only redeeming feature, in my opinion, is its auto-fire capability, which is something you can get on pretty much any third-party NES controller at the time. Beyond that, this thing's a huge waste of plastic and circuitry that would have been better spent on, well, pretty much anything else. This controller gets my retro rating of 2 out of 10. The only quick shot that these things deserve is a quick shot into the garbage. As of this video, you can actually pick this controller up on eBay for roughly around $10. And actually, that's brand new. Now, if that doesn't speak volumes of the um, quality of this controller, I really don't think anything will. I mean, I've personally never used a bigger piece of garbage controller in my life. It's awkward to hold, first of all. I mean, for me, and, well, most modern gamers, you use your right hand to uh, use A and B, and your left hand to use the D-pad. Everything's backwards on this. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming I'm holding it right. As you're pressing the buttons up top here, they tend to stick. I mean, it's sticking right now, even. And... You couldn't even press you couldn't even press start and select together. So if you want to do a code that requires you to press, you know, the start and select buttons together, you couldn't even do that. It's awkward to hold. Um, the buttons themselves are just super soft. It's like the cheapest thing I've ever used in my life. It creaks as you hold it. The the, the cord itself is significantly shorter. I think maybe about 50% shorter than the uh, than the original Nintendo uh, control uh, controller cord. It's just awful. This thing is just, just plain awful. Seriously, its only redeeming factor is the fact that it has the auto fire option up top here. And even that's like whatever, because you can get that on almost any other third party controller. This thing is truly quite shabby. And that's all for this week's Retro Tech Review. I know I did a second Retro Tech Review in a row, but Last week's was kind of short, and I've been wanting to talk about this controller ever since my wife found it at the bottom of my uh, random cable bin. Did you ever use this controller growing up? I'm so, so sorry. But if you did and you liked it, well, just let me know down in the comments below. It could be because I never grew up with it, but I personally can't see how anyone could have used this controller and, you know, truly enjoyed it. But I've been wrong before, and I will be wrong again. That's my mission statement. As always, a special thanks goes out to my Retreon crew. Your guys' support means the world to me, guys. I sincerely, I sincerely mean it. Thank you so much for everything you guys do. You guys are amazing. And you rock. Thank you. As always, I'm just some retro gamer. Keep on gaming. Till next time.